It was mid-January 2018. My daughter and I had traveled to meet my mom for a two-week paradise vacation in Costa Rica. I brought the essentials for any coastal rainforest adventure. Bug spray, hiking boots, bikini, and my laptop. With visions of cranking out assignments as I sat by the pool, continuing to bring in cash flow to pay off the first class tickets I'd bought for us to get here. That morning, we were scheduled to hit up the Manuel Quepos National Park for an afternoon of monkey and sloth sightings. I committed to a, a couple of short projects due that morning, so I'd gotten up early, chugged my coffee, and started at it. A few minutes in, my email pinged with another job. I glanced at the clock, calculating that with another coffee and a little push, I could totally work it in. Besides, who was I to turn down another 50 bucks? Mommy, I'm hungry. Shit. In my caffeine-fueled frenzy, I hadn't factored in feeding my offspring. I just assumed my mom would sweep in and take on her mother grandmotherly duties. I mean, isn't that the whole point of vacationing as a family? Isn't that what the elusive village does? Before I could bark out my own orders, the matriarch herself nudged my bedroom door open. Honey, we've got to go soon. Can't you finish that later? I'm almost done, mom. Just give me a few more minutes. And can you fix Sophia some breakfast? I said, waving her off. But mommy, I want you. Damn it, child. <laughs> I'm trying to work here. I bite my tongue, trying to hold it in when my mom chimes in. Kimberlyn, we're in Costa Rica. Can't you ever just take a vacation? Fuck. And that's when I lost it. You don't understand. I just can't. I have bills to pay. If I stop working, I stop earning. And my income is the only one we've got. Besides, you should be thankful my job is so flexible. We can pack up and come and see you whenever we want. I'm just worried about you is all. You're always working. And I was. I'm fine, I said. But I wasn't. But she was right. I was burning the candle at both ends. I was racking up debt to prove to everyone that I was fine. Perfect, in fact. I was an independent single mom with her shit together, living her best life as I raced it against the clock on the daily to keep bringing in money at the same rate as I was spending it. I was terrified of taking a break, of disconnecting, of missing a job opportunity, or worse, turning one down. On the outside, life was good, but on the inside, I felt I was one misstep away from it all tumbling, uh, tumbling down again. When I'd stepped down from my corporate job several years earlier, what I'd been seeking was time, freedom, and the flexibility to take vacation whenever I damn well pleased. But now I felt time felt like a jail warden, always reminding me there wasn't enough, and I sure as hell didn't feel free. Were these the vacations I had envisioned, typing away on my laptop while everyone in the monkeys played freely around me? Maybe, but probably not. Ooh. You know what I love about this story? What? I was actually just thinking about this, how we have this story or illusion that we're craving time freedom, right? The laptop lifestyle. Yeah. Everyone got it during COVID. The laptop lifestyle, maybe not trapped in your home with your children or whatever that looked like. But how you can be physically in a space that is perceived to be paradise and yet still feeling like you are trapped. You are in prison. Like there's no freedom there. It's restriction. And then the expectations of who you expect other people to be and vice versa and all of that. So what inspired you to write about this moment specifically? I think that this is probably one of um, the moments where I, like really just like cracked. Um, I think that it's something that has happened a lot, a lot. I mean, I have traveled and worked. Um, I vacationed with my daughter and worked. Um, but I think in this particular moment, I had my mom there kind of like breathing down my shoulder. <laughs> I, I felt like her, you know, breathing down my neck, judging me being like, well, what are you doing? And so like at the moment, like now I look back on it and it's like, I know that she was kind of the the voice of reason, if you will. But I just felt like her 
judgment. And I think it, I mean, it was obviously my judgment as well of like, what are people thinking of me? Like, I'm trying to do this all myself. Like I, um, I had a really hard time kind of like explaining. Cause I also, there, there's so much like so much there in our relationship as well, like mother daughter that I didn't want to bring up. Um, but that it was all kind of just like piled on top of me of like, here I am, this daughter who I'm supposed to have my shit together. I'm supposed to be doing it all. Um, and now you're questioning, you know, like my ability to do it. Mm -hmm. And, um, like I can see it now. I don't think at the time I realized how deep in shit I was, like how trapped I was. Um, it's something that like gradually I started realizing like, whoa, like um, I was going on these vacations, but I wasn't really taking a break. I wasn't like having fun. Um, so I can see that now, but, um, but at the time it was just like, I saw it as like a meltdown of my own and, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get it all done. The adult tantrum. The adult, adult tantrum. tantrum. Totally. Totally. Um, <laughs> were you a single parent at this time? Yes. Okay. Yes. So this is like, I'm sure we'll dive into that because I hear mm. from a lot of parents that are like, well, I'm a single parent. I can't afford it. Like it just feels so lack of sustain that the sustainability of single parenthood and the financial income and mm. all of that. Um, but there was a statement that you made in your story around, I was terrified of taking a break. So it's like this illusion mentally that we are taking a break because we're in a vacation place, right. but we're still not taking a break. And yet we've convinced ourselves that we are doing so. We're like, look, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, how do you get out of that? How do you see it? Have you been able to do that for yourself? I have actually. Um, so I, I think at the time, and I, I'm still um, working kind of in the same job I'm, as a freelance translator. So at the time I felt like if I turned down a job, right, that person is no longer going to come back to me. If I set boundaries, that person is going to be like, ah, she has too much boundaries. Like I'm going to go somewhere else. Um, and there was just this fear of like turning down an opportunity. And also um, this fear of like, if I stop, if I don't bring in money now, who's to guarantee money is going to come in next week. Right. As a, as a freelancer, I think, um, it's so, it's so up and down. It's so, there are months where you make a ton or weeks where you make a ton and then a week where you don't have much. And so I always like, as a freelancer, I felt like I got breaks, but they weren't determined by me. It was mm. just kind of de determined by like the workflow. And I, I had to kind like of- a feast or famine cycle yeah, of like exactly. expectation. Like it's coming in rather than being a freelancer, but learning, like, you know, learning how to like market and cash flow and all of that fun stuff. So it's interesting. Right. It's just like other industries where there's like the cultural conversation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. Okay. No, it's definitely, it's definitely feast, of, feast or famine. Um, and honestly, I took my first vacation, like total vacation, which wasn't even like to a paradise place. It was to my mom's house um, after COVID, if you can say that, but <laughs> once I could actually travel um, back to the States and I took two weeks where I turned down everything, but I only allowed myself to do it because the month before had been so great that I was like, okay, let me try this out. And I started putting down boundaries and I realized that those people kept coming back mm -hmm. and it wasn't, I didn't, I didn't lose a client. I didn't lose like major jobs. Um, I think there was also like a manifesting piece in that too, of just like, I want to break. And so it was like, the universe was like, okay, I'm just, I'm gonna, you know, what, what it would send me were like little things of like, will she bite? And I was like, no, I'm not going to bite that. Like, that's going to be an hour of stress. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like ruin this. And it was actually a promise to my daughter as well. Mm -hmm. Um, where she was like, mommy, can you just not work for these two weeks? And I was like, okay. So I have gotten there. It does. Um, it's hard. Like, I think that when you, at, and going back to like the single parent of like a single income, um, like the whole, the whole family is, is depending on me. And, um, 
So I have to, I have to make money. I can't just stop working altogether, but I have learned to kind of let go of the reins a little bit in that sense and actually realize that I have more control over my work schedule than I thought I did. Yeah. And you've been in my world for a little while. Um, I want to know what you have learned or how you got to that moment. We're going to call it an emotionally uncomfortable moment when you're sitting with, I'm putting words into your mouth so you can use your own language, (laughs) but you're sitting with that moment of fear because this is Mm -hmm. the big issue for people and challenge is they won't do that. So they're sitting in that moment of fear of the potential of like the unknown, which is if I say no to this, am I going to be able to pay my bills next month and holding that boundary, holding the vision that you want and desire for your life. That's not to say like some additional skills and proactive strategy or whatever that we're not talking about that talking about the moment, the emotional, emotionally uncomfortable (laughs) moment when you were like, for two weeks, I am disconnecting from everything. Explain the mental and emotional process of what that's like. I think, um, yeah, it was definitely, there was fear. There was this fear of what if I get this like amazing job that is going to bring in, you know, a ton of money and they want to do it right now. Um, there was that fear, but I think, I also took the break after I'd gone through probably about three months of focusing on like feeling good in in mastery. And so I'd been working on, um, I'd even started looking at money, which is something that as a freelancer, I was always terrified to do because I always felt like money was coming in, money was going out. Um, So there was like a three month process where I had actually started looking at money and which made me want to throw up. Um, looking at what I was spending, looking at what I was making. And that habit was so uncomfortable. Um, But I remember I actually, the way I got through it is we were doing, we were in mastery and we were doing a, the um, courage sprint, I want to say in April. And so I had taken those, I had taken two habits. One was walking and one was looking at my finances And I started walking and after walking and after getting that like hit of momentum, then I would look at my finances. And so I kind of, I kind of cheated in a a way where I was like, I know this is going to make me feel like shit. Um, So I tried to do something. It's habit stacking. It's habit stacking. It is. It's not cheating. It's habit stacking. It's actually super wise, which is utilizing. It's like the sandwich effect, right? Mm -hmm. Utilizing something that makes you feel really good and then doing something that you would normally avoid. Right. So that that's exactly what I did. And I started looking at the money and that month of April, I doubled my income Mm. and I wasn't necessarily working more. I just was like manifesting higher paying jobs, things that I could get done faster. Um, and seeing that, that month, I think really just kind of sold me on like, okay, I can control this. If I start looking at my money, I can control how it comes in and how it goes out. Mm -hmm. Um, And so there was probably three months, that was April, we traveled in July. So those, those months of like bringing in income and looking at it. So it wasn't like just like, one day to the next of me being like, okay, I'm going to take a break. It was three months or four months of work of just like trying to figure out my shit and how I can like gain control, if you will, like a sense of control over um, the money coming in. And so that was when I made the decision, like for those two weeks. And it wasn't, I feel like it wasn't that hard at the time because I'd already had this kind of evidence of like, it's fine. It's going to be okay. Yeah. And So what I'm hearing you say is mastery made you more money. Basically. (laughs) Um, Side note, joking, not joking. Um, But is that it's not like, I think you and I are very energetic beings and we're all into meditation and mindfulness. And um, I think sometimes people believe manifestation is like, I'm just going to have this vision board. I'm going to cross my fingers. I'm going to meditate every day and journal. 
which I believe in that it's truly the energy, but you were doing something that was emotionally uncomfortable, which was towards a bigger vision is financial freedom, right? To attract more money. And it's a rinse and repeat process. So you were able to kind of attract more so that you could have a break, even though the fear was still there, right? So it's, yeah, it's like kind of like squirrels, right? You're just like, I got to hoard all my um, nuts. (laughs) Winter is coming. I don't know where this is going. Winter's coming. A guy gets some nuts in a fucking hole. And yeah, I don't know where that's going. I've done, I told you this, this is recorded and I'm not going to take this out. Like this is the <laughs> fifth or sixth conversation I've had in a row. It is Friday. I've recorded almost six hours of interviews today, which is the longest day of interviews. And I am filled with joy, but now I give two fucks of the words that come out of my mouth. So you're a squirrel, you're hoarding money so that you logically can create the space, but there is that emotional discomfort. So what is your relationship to emotion and thoughts now? Like, I know it's always ever evolving, Mm -hmm. but like knowing that like thoughts are not facts, emotions are not facts. Yeah. Um, I honestly, like, and I feel like the past month or so, I've been doing a lot of mindset work, like a lot, um, because all of my shit is coming up again, because, you know, I'm trying to, um, I guess get an up level. And, um, I think that I've become really good at just at noticing the thoughts at noticing like the thoughts um, that come up and noticing like which thoughts are serving me and which thoughts are not. Um, so that, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, we both have one day. It's almost like a Marie Kondo. Like, does this thought bring me joy? <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. You're a room. You're like, I am decluttering. You're like, that is going to donation. This is garbage. This I will keep. It brings me right. joy. This thought brings me joy. And you- even like flipping it, like I've actually, I've noticed now when I have these stories come up and I'm, I'm trying to like pinpoint them automatically. So I don't, not that I'm shoving them under, you know, the carpet, but like, oh, this isn't working. I need to flip this around. Like a couple of weeks ago, I noticed I had the story about like responsibility, which if you go back to the story, there's probably a lot of that in there of like, I am not responsible with money. Like, Mm. um, you know, my parents making me feel like I, you know, spend money, I don't know, impulsively or that, you know, I'm just not gonna be as like financially stable as my parents were. Mm. Um, and I've noticed that and I've tried to switch it around. And so I've been like kind of playing around with this and like flipping it. And I remember like last week I flipped it and I was like, I am responsible for for my money. And I started gathering evidence actually of that. And I was like, every night, like, you know, people do gratitude. I was doing like evidence, evidence of ways I was responsible. Um, which actually ended up biting me in the ass <laughs> by the end of the week. Cause I was like super responsible last week, but it wasn't having fun. <laughs> Isn't that interesting though? Let's talk about that because okay. where your energy goes, your energy flows. Exactly. So there's proof and evidence that actually, if you just be intentional with something, you can manifest it pretty quickly. Like when I'm focused on, if I'm like, Hey, my top priority this week is X. And that's like, really, I'm just thinking about it constantly. I'm like, wow, I did really good with that this week. The key is to do it long enough and consistently enough so that it becomes part of your identity. And you're like, you don't need to, you still need to be intentional, but you don't need to force so much energy there. Right. Then I mean, I think it's a, it's a process where you're like, I'm shit at this. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. <laughs> I Kimberlyn, by the end of this conversation, I'm going to have a whole new definition of like, what the fuck's coming out of my mouth. Anyways, that sentence didn't even make sense. We're just going to keep it like this. We're going to keep it. Gosh, gosh, meant to be gosh. Oh, gosh. We're just going to laugh. Okay. The pendulum swings to the, the other swings. side. The other side is like, yeah, now I'm too responsible. But then there's a belief that responsibility doesn't equal fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like who fucking said that? Yeah. 
I don't our know. Parents, our parents. <laughs> if you want to be good luck, you're a mom now. You're an adult. Welcome. Mm-hmm. Welcome to adulthood. It sucks. Welcome to hard work. Pays off. Hard but work it pays off and it kills you slowly. Yeah. If you want to be successful, you need to hustle and grind. You're like, that doesn't sound fun. I actually see this all the time with friends and colleagues who buy into this, you know, if you want to hustle, like I'm, I'm opting out of hustle culture. Awesome. What do you want and desire? And they just like are avoiding doing any type of work. And so it's like this masculine and feminine. So how do you I'm not using the B word. I'm not going to say balance. How do you play with the energy of the masculine to get shit done, the energy of the feminine to feel and play and all of that? And I know it's fluid for you. So just curious how your relationship has evolved over time. I've learned, honestly, like that my to-do list doesn't have to be ridiculously long. Like if I have one or two things, um, and this is actually the thing that has helped me, I think, take a a step back from working all day long. Like I used to think that I had to work like eight hours a day or, um, you know, and so that would, I would end up on days where, you know, my daughter was at home or sick or whatever. I would pull all nighters because I thought that was what I was supposed to do. Um, and I think that now I've become very good at, at noticing like the, the one or two things that I really need to do. Um, and prioritizing them and like doing like the push for those couple things. And if I'm still feeling resistance towards it, I will go and do kind of energy work. And that's kind of where my feminine comes in of like, like today, this morning, I knew I had to get work done, but I honestly wasn't feeling it. And I tried to like give myself grace. And I, the only thing I wanted to do was like sit down with a book. And I was like, I'm just going to sit down with a book and read my book. And I got done with a chapter. I put down my phone or put down my my Kindle, grabbed my phone. And like, we were getting Voxers and and messages. And I was like, Oh, and I got this Voxer from someone I needed to follow up with. And I started like chatting with her. And then I chatted with someone else. And then all of a sudden, like I was connecting, which is something that I had on my to-do list was to do outreach. Um, And I was connecting with like five different people at the time. And I was like, Oh, I just needed to like fill up my cup a little bit and then I could push. So I think that there is like, for me, it's trying to find that, like that way to use the feminine and the energy to do the push, but the push is really only 30 minutes a day. It's not more. And I try to, yeah, I try to not, I try to put limits around it because usually what I'm doing, if it takes longer, it's because I'm procrastinating. Yeah. And then I'm just feeling like shit before. So I want to talk about that because I can, for me, it's knowing when reading the book is procrastination Mm -hmm. versus when reading. And I know you and I have (laughs) long in-depth conversations around this sometimes where it's like, ah, like we're just like playing with this energy, (laughs) but it's like knowing when reading the book is resistance versus when reading the book is life enhancing. So from your experience, how do you know the difference? Um, I think it's, it, it's like a feeling it's, it's, it's like a bullshit answer, but it's like, it just, I've noticed that, um, recently, and I've been taking your, um, advice, particularly in terms of like fear, when I know that I'm like afraid of something and the fear is like super strong, then I know that I need to tackle it. But if it's something that I just, I know it's on my list, it needs to get done but I'm not particularly feeling called to do it at the time. There's no like fear. There's no um, like mega resistance. That's when I'll kind of take, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's, it kind of depends on that level of how much am I trying to avoid something? If I'm trying to avoid it too much, then I probably should do it. If I'm not really trying to avoid it, I know there's time, um, but maybe I'm just not feeling, feeling in it. And I'm not feeling like the energy Mm-hmm. then I'll, I'll do something that will you know be a walk or meditate or yoga or something that will get me kind of energetically ready to do that task. If that makes sense. Yeah. And I'm hearing you say that it just takes a lot of self-awareness, like emotional intelligence to know when to, to act and when to listen. Um, 
And I don't, I think your answer is going to be different than mine and anyone Mm -hmm. else's because that's, this is self, right? It's like when to push, when to step back. Um, Also, I don't know if you've experienced this, but it's a skill, skills, it's practice. Practice is emotionally uncomfortable. And I'm like, you got to do it. And then sometimes you don't know the feeling until after. So when I was starting to test this, I would be like, oh, I'm really drawn to read a book. First of all, me reading a book is not, I'm, tap, I'm never drawn to reading a book. That's just not my personality. I'd rather go on a walk and listen to a book. Um, so if I know that that's, a, it's definitely procrastination, but let's just say I am, and I'm like, let's test this. Like you have to be willing to test. Yeah. And then after go, that was 100% procrastination. So the next time you get to like, be like, Ooh, you little tricky bastard. You're trying to do that to me again. I'm not going to read you. I'm going to do this emotionally uncomfortable task first. Yeah. Oh yeah. And even, I mean, some days it's like, some days it's the same thing. Like some days it like reading the book will fill me up. And then some days reading the book will make me feel like shit afterwards because it's like, Mm -hmm. you were just avoiding something. So, you know, because of your emotional reaction. Right. Yeah. So let's talk about push. Okay. You said a little push. Like I wrote down a little push. Mm. Um, When I hear the word push, it feels masculine to me. And yet, I don't know why, but I have this visual in my head. First of all, I'm not going to talk about like having babies and contractions and pushing. Push, push. But when you, there's like some energetic force to open anything. You go Mm -hmm. into a public space, you see a door. What does it say? Well, usually it says pull and then I push it and then it doesn't open, (laughs) but let's pretend it says push. You have to put some type of energetic force to move things. You have to push it. You have to pull it. But it's like when you're reaming on that door, you're like, okay, the door is open. I do not need to bust it off its hinges. I think that's where the hustle comes in. So talk about the push. Okay. Um, I think my push, honestly, is is in that uncomfortable. Um, I think it's, and like you said, it's a skill. I think noticing when self-doubt comes up um, and noticing that it's a thought and it's not truth or, um, and then just kind of like breathing and doing the thing anyway, like it's, there is a, there is a moment where you, it, it is a door. I mean, I think it's not like we could just walk right through. There is a door. You kind of have to notice it, see what's coming up. Um, but yeah. And I feel like, like you said, it's not, it's not a forceful push. It's usually just, uh, noticing, the thought or emotion. Um, like pushing the edge. Like you're just like, yeah. there it is. I just, I actually, like I catch myself when I'm like, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. The second I say I'll do that tomorrow, I'm like, you actually have to do that thing today. And I don't always do it. Even if it's, right. I just try to break it down into a 10 minute task or something. Yeah. And I think like if the, if the resistance is too hard, if I feel like I have to push too hard, it's usually because it's not, the thing that I need to be doing. Like usually it needs to be broken down. Like, and I will notice like, why am I not doing this thing? Oh, because it's, I need, you know, an additional piece of information first. And so then I'll be like, okay, well, this is easy. I can just Google this and then there. And so I think it is, I mean, you kind of have to like, it's bite size at times. Sometimes, you know, it's the only thing and you just have to you know, breathe and, and push, push through it (laughs) anyway. But I, I feel like this is, um, a personal definition because Mm -hmm. there is definitely the masculine and feminine. And typically when I'm learning from a male mentor, there's this, like, you just get it done. You just check Mm -hmm. it off. You just, you push, like you grind. And I'm like, that's great. Thank you, sir. And then I see female leaders that I look up to and they, they talk very similar Mm -hmm. and, but I'm like, can you define that for me, please? Like, because I don't think you mean it the same way. And so that's where I always get curious. Like when I hear things and you probably heard me say this, you can do hard things. Mm -hmm. I love Glennon Doyle. 
You can do hard things. You can do hard things. I believe we all can define that differently. A hard thing for me is an emotionally uncomfortable thing. A hard thing is not running a marathon every day and falling into bed and being emotionally, physically, spiritually, energetically exhausted, which I believe some people think it is. And then they're like, I'm going to burn out. I'm going to die. I can't do this. So I'm curious your, because we see these inspiring things and people even misinterpret my words. And I was like, is that in alignment? Does it feel good? No, then pivot, course correct it. Because that's not, that's not what I mean. Yeah, I think, um, so going, going back to like the male, what you were, were, you were talking about, like the, the push, I think, um, And I had a thought and now I'm not really sure if that's like in alignment with what your question is, (laughs) whatever your thought. Go with the thought. So it's not a fact. No, I was I was just thinking, so I have I have very and I was actually just talking about this um with Christina, who's in our group, um, about how we we kind of have this like distrust for like male authors, just because I feel like they don't really consider um a lot of what of who we are as women in their like theory or whatnot. Um, but I think like the push that like, just get it done. I actually read something the other day and I don't know if this is like the feminine or um, the, it's what well, it was actually a book about creativity. So, and it was saying, and I've noticed this in myself is when I have a day where I'm like push, you know, like just checking the things off the list Usually it's followed by a day where I have no idea what to do. Like I have this like hangover of like, I'm doing the things. And then the next day it's like, well, what do I do? Or Mm -hmm. I feel just shitty or I feel like I don't have a plan or anyway. So I was reading this book about the creative habit. I think it's called. And she said for in, in terms of creativity, we actually should leave a task open And I think this is where like men probably would come in and be like, no, you have to finish it. Like you started it, you finish it, you get it, you know, tied up. And I actually, not all men, not all men. I'm I'm learning to heal my inner. Yeah, I know. Masculine issues. But I have to leave them in my house. (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) But, But so it's, it's that like. And I found it genius because it's, it's like you, if you leave something like a task open, for example, um, where you start the task, but you don't actually finish it. If I have that at the first thing for the next day, I feel like it's like you've already started, you've already got momentum and you can do that one thing and get momentum for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I do and like finish, I don't want to say four tasks, short tasks, but I don't have anything pending. I always have the hardest time getting back into that momentum. And I don't know if that's like a thing that you've, you've experienced okay well I will tell you from my experience I get like I've learned not to shame myself like I definitely Mm. still experience shame and guilt but I learn I don't let it stick to me as long it's like a little stickiness not I'm like oh god what else am I gonna say about this it's like when you get a Brazilian wax and there's a little bit (laughs) of wax left but not that much where your lips are gonna be sealed shut (laughs) Let's see how inappropriate this conversation can be. <laughs> We're going to make a lot of people uncomfortable today. <laughs> oh my God. Did you hear? Okay. So the other podcast, when Jessica was doing business Q and a with me and she was mm-hmm. like big D B D E. And I was like, what's B D E. And she's like big dick energy. And I was like, Jessica, why did you say that? And she's <laughs> laughing hysterically. She's like, you're like big Heather energy. I was like, oh my God, the shit that comes out of my mouth and people's mouths. Anyways, this is real life. Don't even know where we're going. Okay, yes. I have actually found that it could be at the end of the day. I'm like, I know that this is not my primal energy time, nor do Mm. I need to still be working. And my husband's like, because I love what I do, especially in the creative, like a podcast topic or trying to create a learning opportunity for somebody. Um, I will look at that task. And then I will percolate on it. And so I can see how energetically it's, it's not a clear cut closed. It's like, 
bringing that energy to the next day. And I'm thinking about it all night. I'm ruminating on it. I'm thinking about it in the shower that day. And then when I do sit down to get something done, it, yeah, I've had momentum with that, uh, that creative idea for that task. So I can totally see that. But like the reason why I'm bringing it up is because when I do push and close it, it actually doesn't feel complete and it feels gross to me. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Same. Yeah. I love this. Okay. Yes. I know we could talk forever. (laughs) Um, you also, let's talk about, I mean, we always got shit to work on like our stuff next new level, new devil. What are you working on now? So you are a freelancer, but what else are you I'm doing? A freelancer. So I am also um, running a virtual co-work space. Mm. Um, I have invited, we are mostly work from home moms um, who come in uh, in two hour chunks to just kind of support each other in doing the work that we do. Um, in part, I challenge um, the women to come in and like, Use this space, one, for that push, but also for the feminine and and the community and the support and accountability um, of just having people who are in it together with you. Um, I think that as work from home um, moms, we get really isolated, um, especially pandemic. I mean, I think that was a whole nother ball game, but um, but I think a lot of people are back at home too, like haven't gone back to the workplace and are still working from home and trying to quote unquote balance it all. Mm-hmm. And I think um, creating that like logistical support for women, because one thing is coaching, but here it's almost like a physical, albeit virtual space um, mm-hmm. where we come together and we do the work and we have the connection and um we just don't feel as, as alone. And we have that like, you know, people behind us. So that's what I'm doing. That is my, um, co-work space. Um, where are you? Yeah. Okay. So what is your Instagram handle? Okay. It's my name. It's Kimberlyn. That's Kimberly with an N, um, underscore. Just spell, o- just spell it. You want me to spell it? Okay. K I M B E R L Y N underscore Owens Hughes. That's all together. O W E N S. H U G H E S. Perfect. Um, yeah, this, it reminds me of, like you said, the coaching, get the clarity, get whatever, but it's the integration. You have to know like action is required. It, you have not completed the cycle. So sev- people will go 75%. They're like, I have everything. I have the education. I haven't mm-hmm. done the integration. And I think you do that so beautifully. And I always tell people, cause you are a part of our community. Um, I've had amazing feedback when people do experiencing your co-working sessions. It's like, they feel lighter. They feel more energetic. They're making those things happen. They're making more money. They have more time. They're really integrating that, that bigger vision. And with this conversation, you're also, cause I've attended some virtual co-working, especially during the pandemic, wanted to poke my freaking eyes out because <laughs> it, I'm like, I'm on another zoom conversation. And what I love about you is Maybe we're doing this virtually together, but you really help people get out of their head and into their body and focus. And you have the strategies to do that rather quickly than procrastinating all day long to get shit done. You're like, let's get it done in a two hour chunk and then have the rest of your day to do whatever the hell you want. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. So is it just Instagram can they follow you anywhere um, else? Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, it's Instagram. You can also look for me on Facebook. The same same name, Kimberlyn Owens Hughes. I hyphenated last name. Um, yeah, either either or. Perfect. Love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you, Kimberlyn. Thank you. There it is. You just listened to the Emotionally Uncomfortable podcast. If you want to take this conversation to the next level, head on over to our private Facebook group community, heatherchauvin.com forward slash Facebook. My last name is spelled C-H-A-U-V-I-N. That's heatherchauvin.com forward slash Facebook. Also, if you are a huge fan of this show, 
please rate and review it on iTunes. Every review helps another woman like you take back control of how she wants to feel and become emotionally uncomfortable. I truly believe the better we feel, the more alive we become, this is how we are going to change the world. And if you've been watching me for a while, if you've been on the fence and you're curious, how can Heather help me? Head on over to heatherchauvin.com forward slash work with me to check out my mastery and mastery business coaching programs. That's heatherchauvin.com forward slash work with me.